Hello everyone, welcome to race 4 highlights for the Japanese Grand Touring Series. And the talk of the paddock was Tony changing to a privateer, leaving the Castrol Toms team and driving an Alexis Denso Sard. This was mainly to compete with MSP J Town and we were hoping to see an epic head to head battle. GTP Pasm there, changing team 2 to the Nissan Navi Nismo Z. Andro R was the final bit of news at this race. He was known as IRT RB26 and is now called Andro, a lot easier to say, and he was racing in Lounge 1 again. And it was off straight away with Tony leading the field. MSP J Town started in third and had to really fight GTP GM Matthew going into the first corner. He obviously wanted second place just so he could have a fight with Tony, and he did indeed get that on the exit of turn 1. The rest of the field will follow closely behind, 2x2. Two Inside and outside of the corner, everybody fighting for that position. GM Matthew would stick with third for now, while other drivers were fighting lower down, including GTP Pasm and MSP Rico. GTP Pasm though would get that position off Rico and would follow behind his teammate of Outlaw 4RC. Obviously it's a new car for GTP Pasm this Nismo Z and it was one he really wanted to learn. Coming out of the hairpin though, it was all about the Schumacher S's. Obviously downforce played is a key part in these cars and it did again here with everybody understeering into the gravel and a few people losing out on quite a few positions. One of the main losers in that was IRT Nisman, who dropped down to 16th position. Phaedrus lost out as well, losing a few positions because of the gravel. But the understeer was the main cause of that. F1 obviously following very closely together. As we finished lap 3, it was Spurgey leading a big, big battle behind with GM Mash Matthew Hashino and GTP Pasm. Spurgey doing one of his defensive drives again, but GM Matthew went for a late lunge. Unfortunately, he didn't pay off. That meant he dropped to 6th position and fell behind GTP Pasm. He obviously was trying to get back up the grid a little bit, was GM Matthew, and it's not paying off. Started in 2nd and has now dropped to 6th position. Outlaw was also trying to keep up with the field. Unfortunately for Matthew though, GTP Pasm and himself would actually have an unfortunate accident and that forced Pasm out of the battle and meant Ghost Driver was all over the back of him. GM Matthew would uh, come out of that accident in 9th position, Pasm in 6th position so a little bit better off but he would have Ghost Driver all over the rear and Ghost Driver went for a really opportunistic move on the hairpin. Unfortunately for Ghost Driver, it didn't quite pull off and GTP Pasm kept that position. GM Matthew, however, had to then go defensive with IRT Nisman. And it was a battle now for 9th and 10th position and probably not the first position which GM Matthew really wanted to get in this race, especially with a second position qualifying. Nisman would get that position from GM Matthew and GM Matthew would also have to watch out behind in this race. We of course had our first pit stops as well, and that was Andro R35. Now the, it all, was all questionable whether two stops or one stop was the faster in this race. Andro of course now going for a two stop. But the leaders were neck and neck in this race, Tony and MSP J Town. Very close battling very early on, with Tony just leading the way from MSP J Town. GM Matthew decided to pit, decided to try and change it up a bit. He did come out ahead of Andro and it did mean he did have some clean air and meant that he could probably put some of his qualifying times in to try and catch up to the field, do a bit of undercutting. The leaders all came round to the chicane and it was a question, is J-Town going to make a move? Tony was defending very heavily, MSP J-Town was on the offensive but Tony would keep that position. We also had a bit of a question as to pit stops for the leaders and Tony was the first one in out of the two. And that also meant he was sticking to a two-stop strategy. It was all then about where is Tony going to come out? And he came out right next to MSP J Town's teammate, MSP Rico. A little bit of contact, but Tony just manages to keep ahead of Rico. And if Tony had fallen behind, that would have affected his race very, very badly. But he did come out ahead, and that was him now racing on until his second pit stop. J Town then pitted the very next lap. Obviously to make sure to cover Tony, as the two leaders did have a bit of a gap to the rest of the field. 
So it was whether the cutback was going to work for Tony. Spurgey decided not to pit. Hashino decided to pit. And then it was a question, who's doing a two-stop and who's doing a one-stop strategy? MSP J-Town came out the pits and he came out behind Tony. And crucially, he came out one second behind Tony, which is just outside the slipstream. So all Tony had to do then was push, push, push. MSP J-Town, of course, was also pushing there. As you see him run slightly wide on the exit to that left-hander. Tony was then trying to battle through the field, just overtaking Nisman. Obviously, these are the two-stop drivers. To uh, sorry, one-stop drivers. Tony is a two-stop driver. And it's all about now, can Tony push himself ahead of these guys to try and really increase the gap between himself and MSP J-Town. As you can see there, there's over a second, and he had to try and maintain that second gap. MSP J-Town, however, really had to push, try and get ahead of Nisman as fast as he could. And he indeed did that. It's going to this left-hander. Very good move by MSP J-Town to try and stay with Tony as they battle through these one-stoppers. Of course, their tyres are a lot worse compared to Tony and MSP J-Town, so they have far better grip. It was then Ghost Driver letting Tony through. It was a very kind gesture. They were teammates, remember? Tony was a Castrol Toms driver. Unfortunately for MSP J-Town, that did mean that Ghost Driver didn't want to let him pass and defended Quinn to the Schumacheresses, giving Tony that vital gap, that vital distance needed. Pazum was then, came out the pit, and he had a battle with Juju and Rico. And this was a big battle happening at the back of the field. Juju, Rico, Andrew and Molman, all having a very good fight. But it was now Tony, and was he going to get past Spurgey? Now he was in second place, Spurgey is in first, Outlaw's in third. These are the common names we see all the time, and this time it was about strategy as well, because Spurgey's on a one stop and Tony's on a two. So they're literally fighting for position at this point. And Tony would then try and use the slipstream coming down this straight up to the chicane to try and gain any form of position. And he dived down the inside. MSP J-Town followed him through and actually gained two positions from that. First Tony only gained the one. So MSP J-Town was the winner out of all four drivers. And then Outlaw went straight into the pits. So it would then conclude to these two them fighting again until the next pit stop with MSP J-Town trying to overtake Tony. Tony trying to overtake MSP J-Town. But on this lap in particular, it was J-Town getting that first position. And Tony having a bit of a slide there as he exited that corner. Spurgey would then come out way, way down the field. Of course, he had to fuel up a little bit more. And this would mean that he would then have to fight through the field to try and get any form of position back from the rest of the guys. And then, once again, these two fighting side by side. A little bit touchy. And it was a little bit na naughty that time by Tony. Just forces MSP J-Town off the track a little bit. GTP Passum's day wasn't getting any easier as he accidentally tapped Andro on the rear of the car, sending him into a spin. Though very gentlemanly, he did wait up for Andro to get back on the track because it was an unfortunate accident. So it was well played by Passum, but this will put them further down the order. GM Matthew making his second pit stop then. Where would he come out? And he'd come out just behind Pazum, but unfortunately got rear-ended by Russ. Russ was on a one-stop strategy until that moment, but got engine damage, so did have to come in at the end of the lap. Which was unfortunate for Russ, but racing's racing. Tony then pitted as well, and it's all about where Tony's going to come out. And he came out in absolutely clean air, and this would mean he had to have to put out down a whopper of an outlap to try and overtake MSP J-Town in the cutback. Where would J-Town come when he exited the pit? It would be ahead of Tony, which was a m big surprise when watching this race. But it was under a second the gap, so it did mean that these two were going to be in a lockdown until the end of the race and meant for an absolutely epic battle. Hashino, where would he come out? He was a two-stop driver and he'd come out ahead of Ghost Driver and didn't have to make up that many more positions to try and catch up to his teammate Spurgey, who was on a one-stop strategy. As was Nisman. So these, two, these three drivers would then end up in an epic battle to the end of the race. Two of them on one-stops, one of them on two-stop. 
It was all about who's going to make those cheeky moves. If this Birdie was in defensive mode once again, as we've seen him many times in this racing series. And this man, Hashino, attacking from behind. It was a yellow hat sandwich. Pazum, under attack from MSP Juju and MSP Rico, came into the hairpin defending. Unfortunately for Pazum, he got overtaken on the inside by Juju, who ran a little bit wide, and Pazum unfortunately went into the gravel, letting Rico through as well, meaning he lost two more positions. <coughs> but it was these two leaders fighting on the last lap, and it was who's going to do what. Unfortunately, they came up against some back markers, and then this event unfolded. MSP J Town in the lead. Tony hit Phaedrus. Phaedrus went off. Tony went off. Russ went off as well. And it was three cars into the gravel tra traps on the grass. It was all about what was the cause of it. Nevertheless, it was still battle throughout the field. Ghost Driver and Skendigid caught up to Nisman, Hashino, and Spurgy and turned this into a five way battle on the last lap. Spurgy and Hashino, of course, were trying to pull away as fast as they could. As they came on to the last corner. Who was going to get this position? Obviously we had Slipstream at the end. It was between Hashino and Spurgy. And Hashino actually got the position. Spurgy came 5th. Ghost Driver came in 6th position. Skendigi 7th. Nisman 8th. And that's your results for this round of the Japanese Grand Touring Series. An epic, epic race. And we'll see you at round 5.